वेलकम टू बिग बास्केट नाउ प्रेजेंट्स द आरसीबी पॉडकास्ट इट्स ऑल एवरी डे दैट यू गेट टू मीट अ नेशनल चैंपियन एंड ओलंपियन स्विमर फ्रॉम इंडिया हु आल्सो हैपेंस टू लीड द साइंस एंड टेक्नोलॉजी इनोवेशन इन स्पोर्ट्स मार्केट फॉर अ लीडिंग फर्म इन द सिलिकॉन वैली टुडे इट्स अ प्रिविलेज टू हैव विद अस मिस शिखा टंडन a former olympian and the director of global partnerships at swexa welcome shikar so nice to have you, you. bangalore girl back in the heart of it yes back in home yeah. for a week but back in home Talk to me about the story of you getting into swimming because it was not as uh, easy as a fish getting into swimming. Hundred percent not. I was actually one of those kids that was scared of the water, and I wanted nothing to do with the pool. Uh, so I would be that kid who would put my finger in the fountain outside the pool and walk around, and that was my idea of you know a, a session. I was really there for the chips and ketchup that was offered after. But no, my brother, a younger brother, had severe asthma, and so the doctor recommended that he take up swimming just to help his lung capacity. And he was six, I was eight. I was dragged to the pool, uh, couldn't stay at home, and uh, that's really that's how it started. Where one thing led to the other, started enjoying it. I wanted to be a runner, so I went to the Reed Abraham Academy. But she said she doesn't take kids till they're nine. Right. So she said, go off, do your thing for a year, and come back when you're nine. But when I was nine, I'd already won my first national medal, and I never went back. <laughs> was it the medalist that kept you motivated one after another or was there something bigger that you enjoyed about swimming i think i just genuinely enjoyed it i mean the medals are just the icing on the cake uh when i won that first medal it was a bronze and uh, i i cried like my mom and i were crying after that medal ceremony she was crying because obviously she couldn't believe that i just won a national medal and i was crying because i didn't like the color of the ribbon and i wanted the one the gold ribbon and so that's when she said you know if you really want that gold uh, gold you got to work for it and i think that just kind of stuck and that yeah it just the thrill of competing the thrill of getting better every day i think even today it's something i really really do it during nice bas ye bolna yahi tumhara ad yeah that's it so yeah <laughs> now delivering in 10 minutes What's the Olympic benchmark that most of the Indian swimmers uh, may be missing? It may be a matter of few seconds, but let's try and talk about it. So when I was competing, you know, back then it was I qualified for the Athens Olympics in two events, and that was the first time a swimmer from India had done that in multiple events. Yeah. Uh, and prior to that, you know, it was good enough to even get a wild card or good enough to qualify for one event. But you know, fast forward to the last Olympics, we had. Two swimmers giving the A qualifying time, which was you know way more improved year performances than what happened twenty years ago, but that was all on the men's side of swimming. So one thing I would like to see personally is the women's side of things, you know, matching up to that and and going forward at a at an equal pace. What got you involved with the science of sport, and when did that direction start taking more of a prominence in your life? So it's been a bit of a bit of everything really from the time I stopped swimming. So when I was competing, I obviously got drug tested a lot, and my education background is in the sciences. I have multiple degrees in biology, genetics, biotech, uh, and so I wanted to work in the science side of things on the anti-doping side, just because I'd seen how the system was pretty broken here, right. and so wanted to be part of that solution. And uh, at the time in India, that was not a career choice. So I. made the decision to move to the US to pursue grad school and after grad school worked at the US anti doping agency on their science team for about 4 5 years and then moved to the heart of silicon valley which is you know heart of the startup culture and so you can either choose to embrace that tech environment when you're there or you can get lost and that was the time when the whole wearable industry was also just taking off and so i chose to you know embrace it and and i'm glad i did because i worked at a few wearable uh, tech companies and that's when that's pretty much what led me to what i do today which is on the data that's being collected we run algorithms to help analyze that so i'm still involved in sport in very different capacities to what it was earlier but i feel like every opportunity that has come my way every role that i've taken on has built upon the previous one and so for me that's kept it super exciting and also kept 
it almost relevant to be you know in this industry as it's growing and just yeah read the the excitement of that growth as well technology is truly taking center stage when it comes to sports but let's talk about the kind of impact it has on an athlete mm-hmm. um and you can probably give us a a fair enough comparison of what it was like and what it is now yeah for sure so when i was training i mean this is like good 15 15 20 years back i mean for context i mean we had one heart rate monitor for the entire teams or the entire lane so we would come in and if we uh, we wanted to check our heart rate we either do it manually or we would have this shared chest strap that we would you know use to get our get our heart rate and today you know fast forward this 15 15 years everyone has a smartwatch everyone is gathering data they don't know what to do with and same goes for the for the swimmers as well like you have watches now that you can use in the pool you have devices that you can use to gather you know more data whether that is glucose monitoring whether that is you know uh, just stre- strength uh, data outside the pool you have you know stuff that you can even do from a subjective data so your mood your things around your menstrual cycle there's so much so much available and so the area that we function is just helping athletes helping teams helping coaches helping people make sense of all that data that they've already collected uh, on themselves bas ye bolna hai yahi tumhara ad yeah that's it so yeah <laughs> now delivering in 10 minutes What are some of the lesser-known challenges, Shikhar? Does it involve letting an athlete know the kind of tools that are on access, and probably take a peek into this? This is going to yeah. help you enhance your performance to a large degree. The challenge really is around the adoption of tech, not just from an athlete standpoint, but from a coach standpoint as well, right. because. a lot of this tech that you see out there today is you know these coaches and athletes are unfamiliar with it so when you aren't familiar with something the knee jerk reaction is to you know take a step back saying that no i i don't understand this so it's not for me and so i think if athletes and coaches today can take a step forward have an open mind and really you know embrace and understand uh you know then they'll see that all of this tech of has a you know has the, the potential to really augment their uh then offering or their skills as a, as an athlete or a coach and you know then if you can embrace it you can just scale so much more and you can do so much more with with the data so it's not necessarily trying to you know replace that coach but it's really allowing you to do your job that much better you're someone who has managed multiple passions you are an avid swimmer at the same time you managed to do so very well in academics would you say it's best to juggle both the worlds i think so i mean just again my personal experience i think everything that i'm doing today would not have been possible if i had only done swimming or only done academics uh and so and more importantly you know when you think about athletes and when you think about career transition right like you could get injured today and your career is over tomorrow and if you haven't planned for what's next it's just very very easy to get lost uh and so that transition becomes longer it becomes lonely and you know that can lead to so much more that could be avoided if you just plan a little bit ahead you can always delay when you want to you know jump from professional sport to a career after whatever that might be but if you have that base set up it is going to make your life uh, that much easier whenever that time comes you know whether it's through an injury or whether it is through a choice that you have made you are ready for what's next right i'm sure you're keeping a close eye on the future generations of swimming champions per se are you hopeful about india and how do you think the future generation is going to look like swimming i mean has definitely come a long way uh, i think in terms of infrastructure and that you know quality of the pools that you have uh, the number of kids that are participating everything is uh, you know taken off in the right direction still a way to go but for for now at least uh, baby steps in the right direction bas ye bolna ye tumhara hai Yeah, that's it. So yeah. <laughs> Now delivering in 10 minutes. Talk to me about the networking event uh RCB Innovation Labs. This is Leaders India Meet. What was it like? The stage time, the interactions that you've had. It's I mean you they put together a pretty uh, pretty impressive event and it's the first time it's happening in uh, in India so personally I'm glad it's Bangalore uh, but I I think in terms of you know the quality of the the audience the quality of the discussions it's definitely up there 
and the type of people that we're getting to meet are key decision makers in their industry, in their companies. And so the the level of interaction that you have is is pretty high. And that's really what you look forward to when you come for such events. So I, I think so far it's been spot on. Right. Before we wrap this up, a uh, word of advice going out to young swimmers who are starting out, be it in terms of potential, the tools, how the future of swimming looks like. I think for me, it's really, uh, you know, I think about advice to the younger kids. It's really be open, be open to opportunity, be open to ideas, because what is today may not be tomorrow. I mean, what was five years ago is not definitely not today. Uh, and so if you can be open, if you can be receptive, be uh, flexible, be flexible. Yeah, yeah, I think it opens up a lot more than having this really rigid path, because uh, chances are it may not be as in sailing as, as that. Right. And just keep swimming, I guess. Yes, Shikata, swimming, the... yes. <laughs> Thank you so much for Thank being you. part of RCB Thank podcast. You. Look forward for plenty more discussion. Sure. Thank you. Big Basket Now presents the RCB podcast.